are. Tonight we will celebrate a hand fasting. Are you ready to tie the knot? Today, the cords don't hold quite as much legal meaning as they once did, but they can still be a special way to honor a milestone for couples who appreciate the symbol of unity they represent. By using carefully selected cords or various colors that represent different promises to one another, couples begin the start or continuation of their married life quite literally tied together. What is a hand fasting? Simply put, a hand fasting is a ceremony where person's hands are literally tied together to symbolize an agreement. What is the significance of a hand fasting? Nowadays, that answer will be as unique as the individuals taking part in that ceremony. Let's start with some history. Hand fasting was prevalent in Scotland and England in the 16th and 17th centuries. A hand fasting ceremony was a way to make a contract with your beloved. In other words, to marry them. It was a way to make a union official way out in the country where getting to the priest for a legal wedding with all the binding effects was not possible. A hand fasting marriage was a betrothal with all the binding effects of a conventional marriage, including conjugal rights and cohabitation, but it could have an expiration date. In some instances, couples were expected to wear a piece of red ribbon for a year and a day, and then decide if they would like to stay married. If they wanted to separate, it would be as if they were never married at all. It was kind of like a trial period or probationary marriage, wherein the couple agrees to cohabitate and behave like spouses. I'm sure the practice saved a lot of heartache because you really don't know another person until you live with them for a while. This, however, does not diminish the seriousness of the agreement. The term hand fasting comes from an Anglo-Saxon word, hand fasting, which is a shaking of hands over a contract. To this day, a handshake deal means something to many people. Though not legally binding, it would affect your reputation to renege on such an arrangement. Hand fasting was the ancient equivalent to the civil service. Later, when the priest came through town, he would bless these unions and make them official in God's eyes. But we know the goddess was watching all along. In many modern traditions, today a hand fasting ceremony will be included in more traditional weddings. The royal weddings include this practice. It may or may not include the trial period 
or the signing of papers to make it legally binding. Either way, it's a beautiful sentiment and a perfect opportunity for some fiber magic. Aha. Cords can be braided, macrame, or perhaps even crocheted to symbolize strength in unity. The braid is often used to represent the two people plus their faith or their commitment intertwined. It is hard to break a three-ply cord. Here's some examples of some very colorful hand fasting cords with various symbols um, that can mean something to the couples or the folks who use them. If you chose red for your cord, you would be adding passion and strength and with orange, kindness and plenty. Yellow for joy and balance and green, of course, for fertility in health, wealth and wisdom. Blue would add patience, devotion and sincerity. And purple, power and a touch of magic. Black would be strength and wisdom and success. White, purity, meditation and peace. Gray would be a perfect balance of colors. And pink, romance and happiness. You could add brown for the earth, for grounding, for a home, for a, a steady home. And silver would be a treasure, creativity and inspiration. And gold would add wealth and intelligence and longevity to your marriage. And as you can see here, you could add the tree of life, the wisdom of an owl, huh? an octopus for some reason. <laughs> a compass point so that you would never lose your way, a heart for love, a dragonfly for inspiration, an elephant, elephant is good luck with the trunk up, and then of course a Celtic knot would be very traditional. There's also other ways to add uh, symbology and, uh, and meaning to your cords. You could use essential oils on your hands before you braid them and add the correspondences that go along with those uh, herbs, with those scents. Um, you could even uh, burn some incense while you were braiding your cords. So that would also uh, add that connotation to the cord itself. Cinnamon is one of my favorites, love, power, and protection. But you could burn some lemongrass incense to, to form a cleansing area in order to perform your bra the braiding of your cords. Orange for success peppermint for money. You could really um, make your cords unique and, and, and spe a special meaning for your special day. There is a language of flowers. If you choose to add flowers to your cords or to your bou bouquet, um, you can think about what the meanings of those flowers are. I thought this was kind of interesting that white roses are used so often. And actually the language of white roses is, I cannot. Better yet to put some red tulips in there and declare your love. I would love 
to see a hand fasting under a blooming apple tree because that would symbolize that I prefer you before all. When you are performing a hand fasting, the officiant may be the one that ties the knot or the couple may choose to tie their own knot. In some ceremonies, members of the family or friends are asked to tie the knots. Sometimes very elaborate sleight of hand type knots are practiced before the ceremony. They grab each other's hands, they wrap the cords around, and then when they pull away, ta-da, a Celtic heart or something like that. Well, this seems like a unnecessary uh, pressure to me. <laughs> Unless you are very adept at knot tying or you want to practice that a lot, <laughs> I would just uh, rely on creating the perfect chords. And once you have the perfect chords that have all the meanings, meaning that you want to convey, then the actual knot need not be <laughs> so fancy. So as we said before, this, uh, this practice of tying the chords um, could be the entire ceremony, you know, or it could be part of a bigger ceremony and vows can be exchanged when the knots are tied. That would really tie that meaning in. Music can be played, a poem could be read. And it seems to me like that would be the perfect time for a spell. We swear by peace and love to stand, heart to heart and hand in hand. Mark, O oh spirit, and hear us now, confirming this our sacred vow, so mote it be. A couple could perform a ceremony like this privately if the families demanded a more traditional event, maybe you would just um, abide by the wishes of whoever was paying for the day. But then later on in the privacy of your own home, you could stand before your God and goddess and make a commitment of your heart. And that to me is, is what a hand fasting means. It is not necessarily a legal piece of paper that tells you what you're obligated to do or not do here on in. Um, it is a contract of the heart between persons that are committing themselves to each other. So as I mentioned before, um, this practice could be a brand new um, arrangement, or it could be a continuation of a married life, a recommitment, and um, a renewal of vows is a perfect time to tie a few knots. And this is exactly what Carl and I did last weekend. Uh, we celebrated and commemorated 25 years together with a promise of at least 25 more. And these are the chords that we used, um, silver and for the 25 years, but also um, the silver stands for uh, the, the treasure, the value, um, and the inspiration of our relationship so far. Uh, the little lavender moons <laughs> with a little sparkle I put in there for the whimsy, for the magic, and for the goddess. 
that really is our strength. Uh, we exchanged silver rings. Um, it was a beautiful ceremony that Oksana wrote for us. And if you notice here, this is our hand fasting certificate. And she used the exact same certificate that I picked out to use earlier in this presentation. <laughs> So great minds really do think alike. <laughs> and this was definitely the hand fasting certificate that was meant for us. All right. So without further ado, uh -huh. Carl and I have been through a lot together in the last 25 years, including a pandemic. So it's fitting that, uh, that we Zoomed the occasion and then we will, after tonight, make it available on YouTube. <laughs> so now it's time to enjoy our